Today, we are talking corner pinning. Now, what is corner pinning? Well, for that, you need to back up. No, no, back up. This is corner pinning. Now I got the idea for this video while skating from Venice to Santa Monica. I was going out for a nice cruise and I didn't really want to take my big camera, just my iPhone and enjoy the cruise up, to, up the beach. Now I often thought to myself whilst I was filming some Instagram stories, I was like, well, a lot of this footage gets wasted. We just throw it away or just leave it up on Instagram stories. Why not incorporate it into our vlogs? Well, inside DaVinci there's a method called corner pinning. You can actually take that footage corner pin it into a photograph and actually reuse it inside your vlogs. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today and I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to do that inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's do this. Okay, so once you've opened up DaVinci Resolve, you want to import your media. I've already gone ahead and imported uh, two pieces of media. For up here we have our iPhone, image, uh, iPhone footage that we took and actually took down from uh, Instagram stories. This is the clip that we want to put into this photograph here which I took on my Canon 5D Mark III. So first of all, we're going to drag and drop the um, still image onto our timeline and then we're going to take our iPhone clip and put that above it. Two things to note here. First of all, um, our still image isn't as long as our video clip, so we need to drag that out so that matches. Second of all, we can no longer see our still image through the um, video footage. So if that is the case, go to your video clip, right click on it clip attributes and then down under alpha mode we're going to change that to pre multiplied. Now we can see our background image through the video clip. Now the first thing that we know about the background image is that it doesn't quite fit the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So this image was taken on my Canon 5D Mark III, it's full resolution. So what we want to do is just scale that up so you don't see any more black bars. And around there is pretty good. You can also scale it up more if you wanted to and uh, reposition it around. Now the reason why it's a photograph of my iPhone is because the clip that we shot on the iPhone was obviously shot on an iPhone, so it makes sense to put it back onto your phone. This can be any screen, it doesn't have to be a phone, but I chose to be on a phone because it makes sense. So you need to capture another image to go along with the clips, the image being whatever you feel is relevant to the clips that you took. For me, just an iPhone on the table did fine. So that's what we're gonna work with. So back here, we're gonna re-enable our iPhone clip over the top. Now you can see it clearly does not fit. Now I thought inside DaVinci Resolve, all you can do is just scale it down and use transforms to actually make it fit the image. In theory you can, but it takes much too much work and it's much easier to do it inside Fusion. Now don't worry, I'd never use Fusion either. It's a little bit daunting, but with these simple tips, you'll get through it no problem. So first things first, we need to then convert these both to fusion clips. To do that, just simply right click on the, the um, clip, new uh, fusion clip, and we'll do the same with the still image, new fusion clip. That's it, that's step one done, piece of piss. Right, so let's jump over to fusion, that's the little wand uh, icon at the bottom of the tab, just hit that. All right, so once you open up fusion, you're gonna have this kind of window. So this is a node graph down the bottom now, I know it looks daunting, but trust me, it's actually quite simple and easy to work with. Up here you have your two inspector windows, you have one and two, we're only using two at the moment, so we can close down the second one, so we just got this main one up here. Now you might note that the uh, image shown up on the uh, inspector is actually the wrong one, that's fine, we can work with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our fusion clip recreated earlier into our uh, node graph, and our second fusion clip up here. So we're actually gonna get rid of this one and then plug plug in me, this new media tab into, oh come on Dave, into our media out. So that's now showing our background image. Now if you like, we can actually rename these over here so it makes it a little easier to see. So we can call this one background and then we'll call this one foreground. Right, okay, so we need to take this foreground clip and merge it with our background clip. So what you're gonna do is select your background node, hit sh shift and then space bar. And this is gonna bring up our new tool selector inside Fusion and we hit merge. So start typing in merge and it will display. And you just want that one, hit add. Okay, so now we have our merge node. So if we connect the foreground into our merge node, you can now see it's displayed up there. Now, there is a little bit extra that we need to do here. Let's just hide the media pool so we can see it nice and centered. Um, 
This is going to merge the entire 1920 by 1080. Now, as our clip was shot in vertical format, when you can form that vertical footage into a 1920 by 1080, it's actually gonna be 608 pixels by 1080. So we need to add a crop onto that. So again, select your foreground node, hit shift and spacebar, and type in crop. This will add it straight into our um, part. So you've got foreground, which is now being cropped. So we need to tell it how much to crop by. Now 1080 is the correct size up here, but we want it 608 and we're gonna keep centered. So that's now cropped that for us. If you bring it down a little bit. Okay, so once we've cropped it, we wanna transform it or scale it. So the next thing to do is whilst you've got the crop selected, shift space bar, and we're gonna type in corner. And this will come up with the corner position node. Add that, now we can start skewing it around. Uh, you've got these little points. So for this, what you wanna do is we can maximize this because you wanna zoom in quite close so you can actually see what's going on. So we, first of all, we're just gonna take these little points and start matching them up. Now you'll see why I actually photographed my iPhone with the screen on, and that's because I can actually see the screen so it makes it easier to get a match to. So just take each one of these points and just click and drag until they cover up the image. Now you can be a little bit rough at first because we'll go through and refine that. We're at 200%. Let's go into 400%. All right, so there's a slight bit there. Slight bit there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's uh, make our node graph a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. All right, so we can move these down at a step here. now. If you feel like your clip that you've just inserted into your photograph looks a bit washed out or the colors are not quite right, you can actually click on your foreground node and what we can add in there is, if we go shift spacebar, we can type in color and you can get color curves. We can add that in series and then you can actually like start playing around with the curves to your desire. So you can get the effects so they match each other and that's basically what you're looking for. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave it as is. So we've got our background image, which has been merged over with our foreground image. We then crop that foreground image and then we use corner positioner to get it to match the screen on our iPhone. So that is basically it. So from there, you can jump straight back into your editor. If you scrub through your timeline, you can actually see that it's now playing on your still image. It is literally that simple. You can do that as many with as many clips as you would like super fun super useful and now you can stop wasting all of those clips so that's how you reuse your instagram story content and put it inside your vlog using corner pinning inside davinci resolve now if you do get stuck in the future don't hesitate to revisit this video all of the steps are in there now if you do like this video do give it a thumbs up leave a comment if you've got any tips or tricks that i should be aware of inside fusion and if you aren't already please do subscribe to the channel it does help and if you want to chuck me a follow on instagram i'll be much obliged Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.